what's up everybody welcome back to the channel and today in today's video we are tackling something that i have been a little bit nervous about uh, since i got the truck because i knew i was going to do it from the very beginning and that is completing a 6 volt to 12 volt conversion you see this truck does not run off of a typical 12 volt battery like your modern cars so in case you didn't know or are not familiar with these much older vehicles uh the early ones including old ford tractors uh, or really any tractors and old cars and trucks they ran off of a six volt battery that's right so the whole electrical system for this truck is designed for a six volt battery a six volt system the 12 volt power upgrade will give us better starting it'll be able to just run down to o'reilly's or autozone or wherever and get parts to really make things easier for us so that's what we're going to do today um, but there's a few items that we got to get switched before we can hook up a new 12 volt battery so with that being said let's get started now there are quite a few ways to do, go about this um, varying ways that will cost you different amounts of money for me i went the easy route now this was not the cheapest route by any means but i went ahead and went to a place called vintage auto garage um, online they provide lots of parts for these older 50s vehicles especially the chevys there you go right there and by the way this video is not sponsored by them but hey if you see this video and you want to get in contact with me <laughs> anyways stay put together a complete package for you that has everything you will need to convert it. All you got to do is answer a few questions um, and the box is on its way and it, and it actually came pretty quick. So there's a few items that we'll go through, including these instructions, which will be nice to have. Uh, believe me, I have already watched many, many videos and read many forums. However, this will come in handy to get me on my way. And let's look at some of the parts that we're getting in here. All right, so some of the items you're going to get in this box is a 12 volt to 6 volt reducer. Um, and this is going to be for the fuel gauge, I believe, because out of all the gauges, the fuel gauge will need to be reduced. It is designed for the 6 volt system. Something else you'll need is the coil that is currently on uh, the truck is currently designed for 6 volts as well. Um, and I'm also personally going to convert to a electronic ignition because I'm not excited about points. So here's electronic ignition conversion for the distributor. Now this is a horn relay. Um, I'm not sure that this is really needed. From what I read online, it's, it's not needed. The horn will work on the new 12 volt circuit. Um, it'd just be really loud. Uh, so we're going to have to think about this one and see if we're actually going to put this on. Now this is wiring for the new alternator, um, which we'll look at in a second, but essentially the alternator that or really right now, the truck has a generator, not a alternator. Um, and you can buy a 12 volt generator, um, or you can take your six volt down to an electric electrician shop to convert it, but we're not going to do that. We're going to switch to an alternator. Um, that way we can get rid of the voltage regulator, the external voltage regulator, and have it internally regulated. Now this is a blower motor reducer. So your heater that's currently in your truck, or this truck, is meant for 6 volts. So this is another step down that we have to do from 12 volt to 6 volt. Um, like I said, there's very few items that you actually have to step down, but the blower motor and fuel gauge are definitely a couple of them. So this will step it down from 12 volts to six volts so I can use the original heater on this truck, um, assuming that it works. <laughs> now this looks to be a new bracket for the new coil that we're gonna be using. Uh, and one of the most important parts of the conversion. So these are actually the brackets for mounting the alternator to the existing block. So since the generator is like this big, the alternator will need to be, uh, they'll, we'll have to have a new bracket for it uh, since it's a lot different mounting. Um, and it just allows us to mount it to the existing system as it sits. Um, and then I believe this is the new coil. Yep, so this is the new coil, uh, no brand coil, but this is a coil that's meant to run off of these 12 volt system and will tie into our new electronic ignition. 
And last but certainly not least is the new alternator. So this will replace the current six volt generator that I have on the truck. Um, it is important to note that this is a GM two wire alternator from the eighties. Um, that's what everybody uses when they're doing the conversion. Um, and basically it's a internally regulated alternator. Like I said, so you don't have to have an external voltage uh, regulator like the truck currently has. Um, so we'll be able to get rid of that. And without further ado, this is everything that I think I'll need. Hopefully I don't have to run to O'Reilly's or anything today. And uh, let's get it started. All right, so we are on the passenger compartment of the truck. And step one for us is actually going to be to remove the old six volt battery. On these old trucks, the batteries over here in the passenger compartment, which is kind of odd for me, odd for any kind of modern vehicle. Now the previous owner said that this battery was bought back around 2015, so it's not super ancient, but it is a six volt battery. So one, it's, it's old enough to be useless and two, we're converting to 12 volts. So we certainly don't need it um, and we'll get it out of here. So oh, we are now going to prepare for the first step after removing the battery and that is getting rid of this guy. What this is, is the original voltage regulator for the six volt system. There are three wires that come out of it. You have the field wire, which you can see I've used my labeler. Um, you also have your armature or gen wire that comes out of it and from the middle here. And then of course you have your bat wires. One of these battery wires um, goes to this horn relay um, and the other battery wire goes in and goes into the ignition. Now these field and arm wires or field and gen wires, as you can see, they run down here um, and they make it all the way to the generator. So we will no longer need these wires, therefore I can remove them um, and we can start the preparation for the alternator installation. All right, so you can see the field and arm wires. They're just, see that I've disconnected them from the voltage regulator and they're just kind of flailing about. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to disconnect them from the generator down there um, and throw them aside. We will no longer need them again. Um, then I'm gonna start unbolting the bracketry um, that holds in the generator and completely remove it. All right, so the two wires off of the generator are removed. Um, like I said, it is now time to loosen those bolts and get this thing out of there. Oh, generator. All right, as you can see, the generator and the wiring for it has been removed. Um, so all that's left is this bracket, as well as this base mounting plate for the generator, which we will replace with the one that we got from Vintage Garage. Um, so we can fit the alternator. So we need to get these bolts out as well, as well as this bracket. Uh, let's get that done. All right, so the old bracket is out and the new bottom bracket is in. So now we'll replace this upper bracket. All right, so the top bracket is out and we have now put in the new alternator in with the bolt. I'm about to put the washer and nut behind it um, and tighten it up and then I will pivot it over to where it lines up with the belt. And that way I can move the bracket front and back to line up perfectly with where the belt needs to be. All right, so we have the upper and lower brackets in. The alternator is mounted. Um, it's loosely mounted, like I can still move it around. Um, we ran into a little bit of a hitch. So the original V belt is not long enough to get around the pulley here. Um, so I went to O'Reilly's down the road um, unfortunately, they did not have any 3 8 pulleys um, the right length in stock, and I will not get it tomorrow. So that pretty much throws trying to get this thing started out uh, today. So with that being said, let's move on to the next step. All right, you can see in back of the alternator, we have this DA plug um, that we're going to plug into the back of it for this GM2 wire alternator. There we go, it's plugged in. We'll put one of the the battery side on the back of it and tighten it down not too tightly because i believe we're going to have another connection to the back of it there 
Now the DA plug has two wires. This one is a battery wire um, and this white wire is an excite wire. And the red wire that we're about to hook up here, which I have in my hand, is going to run up through the firewall and we're going to run it through the firewall to the ammeter and then from the ammeter to the battery. That way we know if our system is charging um, and what's going on there. This white wire, the easiest thing to do is to hook it up to the positive side of the coil or any kind of switched 12 volt battery terminal. In other words, you could put it at the coil, um, you can put it at your ignition switch. Um, so when you turn the key and it excites the 12 volts, it will also excite um, the alternator. And either one of those options is a great option. And uh, we're gonna start hooking these up. All right, and I have taken the voltage regulator out, the old one, because I no longer need it. And it's for six volts anyways. And I'm gonna replace it with this guy. Uh, what this is, is a bus bar that will allow me to run one 12 volt wire into it and feed multiple things. Um, the reason why I got this is because the horn relay and the battery wire were connected together into the old voltage regulator. I need a way to tie those back together and continue to run it into the car. And since they're 10 gauge, they don't splice together very easily because they're too big of wires. So what I did was is I'll just feed one of these posts um, with the battery cable and then put the other um, two into this. And that should work for me. And this is about the same size as the old voltage regulator. In fact, it's the exact same size, which is convenient. Um, so I'll just wire it up like that. All right, there we go. It's mounted. Um, now I just need to attach these wires. I'll have to probably uh, cut this wire to tie it in and then run it back out. So let's put some ring terminals on. All right, as you can see, I have the bus bar mounted. I'll have to plug the old holes from the voltage regulator. Um, and I'm also out of the eye rings that will hook onto that. I only had one left. And of course I'll um, electric, put electric tape on that one and make sure they're secure. Uh, so I'm not gonna make a trip to O'Reilly's just for uh, eye rings because I'm sure I'm still missing a couple parts. So I'll wait till I have a bigger parts list to reduce my runs into town. But while we're here, the last thing we're gonna do under the bay um, is replace the horn relay. Now, from what I read online, I don't think you have to do this. Um, it's supposed to work, but with the kit that I told you I ordered, um, they give you a new one. So, I mean, if I got a new one and I paid for it, might as well utilize it, right? And I think it's meant for 12 volts. So, um, longevity wise, I'm sure it'll last. So, uh, I'm going to take this horn relay off and I'm going to replace it with this one. It's pretty straightforward. Just remove the two bolts, um, plug in the wires in the same places they already are right now. Um, and let's go ahead and get that part done. All right, there we go. So basically took the, replaced the old one and put the wires exactly where they were. Not complicated at all. And I did get the new belt from O'Reilly's, uh, which is a 44, by the way. Uh, I think before it was only a 40 or a 41. Anyway, so I got the 44 on there, fits perfectly. Got their alternator tightened down. Um, so like I said, I'm not gonna run to O'Reilly's till I get the new um, eyelets um, and I get a larger list and I'll finish hooking up these wires like this um, but now I have the excite wire running on the inside I gotta go inside now um, and hook this up to the ignition post now before we get started underneath the dash I wanted to show you what we're doing so this is a six or I'm, I'm sorry it's a 12 volt to 6 volt reducer now this takes the 12 volts that we are now going to get from the system um, with our new 12 volt battery and circuit and re reduces it back to the original six volts um, that the fuel gauge is used to getting. Um, see that fuel gauge will not work on 12 volts. Uh, I'm not sure it will blow it out, but it's not gonna read correctly. Um, probably ruin it most likely. Anyway, so luckily on these old trucks, um, you only have to do one gauge. So what we're gonna do is we're going to undo the stud on the positive side, we're going to plug the circuit board in very carefully. It is a circuit board, so we don't want to damage it. Um, connect the original wire back into this side, which is the reduced side. So, um, and then this black wire is going to go to ground. 
All right, so you see in the, over here on the middle of the screen where the red wire's on the right, that has like a black sleeve over it, and the black wire on the left. So we're going to loosen up the red wire. Um, I'm gonna try to video this as best I can, but it is tight under here. Um, and we're gonna loosen that. We're gonna hook that circuit board I just showed you to it. And then we're gonna hook up that red wire to that brass post on that circuit board. Um, and then we're going to take the ground and find a mounting uh, hole for either the gauge cluster or the gauge just to ground it um, as the ground is going to be crucially important um, to getting this reduced down to six volts. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do this and hold the camera, uh, but I'll show you the end result. So just take a mental snapshot of how that looks now and I'll come back once I have it connected. All right, here we go. We are on the back. So you can see, like I told you, the red wire went onto the circuit board. The circuit board is attached to the back of the gauge, so that should reduce it. Um, and the ground wire, I used a mounting bolt for the adjacent gauge. As you can see, the black wire is running over to it to ground it. And that should take care of our reduction. Um, so now the only, the last thing we gotta do under here besides changing bulbs out um, is to attach the white wire to the ignition. So let's take a look at that. All right, it looks like there's a aftermarket ignition switch on the back of mine, so it's a little newer. Um, but basically what you're trying to do in the back of the ignition switch, whatever one you have, is you're trying to figure out where the coil from the engine is hooked up. Um, so your ignition coil will be hooked up somewhere on the back of your ignition switch. And what you need to do is you need to hook in that white excite wire from the alternator that we fed into the firewall earlier, um, put a connector on it and hook it up to the ignition switch. Um, as you can see on mine with the newer ignition switch, the left post is empty because, well, the whoever put this new switch in didn't wire it worth a damn. Um, so the wire was loose. All I did was touch it and it, it came loose. <laughs> So that's not worth, you know, like I said, not worth whatever. Anyways, so let's uh, get this hooked up and I'll show you. All right, so you can see we have the ignition wire and the excite wire together and plugged into the solenoid or ignition part of the um, key switch there. So that should take care of the alternator. Um, so now it is time to start changing out bulbs under here. Now I have already made the trip to the auto parts store and gotten the bulbs for the truck. Um, and I'll show you it as I go along. For me, um, under the dash, there are 57s. Uh, actually the bulbs that were in there are probably the originals or at least very old. Um, so the number didn't exist anymore, but I was able to match them up with these. Um, so underneath your dash here, you will see these posts like this guy here. And you will take those out and there we we're, blah, 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 there will be bulbs in there um, that you'll have to change out because these are six volt bulbs. Um, I imagine as soon as you plug in 12 volts to them, they will pop. So uh, there should be one, another one over here, right there. There's two more over there. All right, here we go. Here's one out. So we will take this guy out. It should push in and twist out. There it comes. Can see that it is the same same bulb just one's the 12 volt version this one's a 6 volt version all right next thing for me is the dome bulb you can see i've already taken out via two screws pretty simple um, and for me those bulbs are 93s all right here it is reinstalled switch still rocks we'll see if that works and man this is the plastic is really old we'll probably have to change that out one day it's pretty much fogged over all right, next is the turn signal. Um, you can see it's got the two connectors there. These are going to be 1154s for my truck. Um, with you, know, you can see the double connector on the bottom. And let's put that one in. All right, next we will do the headlight. As you can see, this is the original bulb that was in it. Um, this is pretty standard bulb. You can find it at um, any kind of auto parts, Star O'Reilly's, AutoZone, whatever. Um, it's got three connectors on the back. Um, you can see the connector there. And it comes in a box like this. You can find it in the auto parts store, 6024. 
On the back, um, they give you a little window to look to make sure it's the same connectors. Um, and it is, and these will be a lot better, especially better than the six volt, because this would be 12 volt and it's halogens, and it's this is like the top of the line Sylvania, or at least that's what they tell me. It could be full of crap, but it'd be better than the six volt anyway. So let's unbox this and get this one installed. You can see that the headlamp just simply plugs into the black connector right here, um, and then you just push it into the housing, and then you screw it back in. All right, so the headlight turn signal lights are done on this side so now we'll go to the other side and do the same exact thing all right here we are to the tail light and guess what it is another 1154 bulb <laughs> so i'll replace this tail light and the one over there and that should be it for the bulbs not very many bulbs on this truck i just realized that i forgot a bulb the license plate bulb so we'll have to see what that is and change that one out as well Okay, so we are on the passenger side now where the distributor and the coil is. Um, this is a six volt coil and also the six volt distributor. Um, the distributor on this truck still has the points in it. Uh, so as soon as we hook up the 12 volts and try to start this thing, it's probably gonna burn those points out. Um, but like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna go to electronic ignition. Now the kit I got, or you can get really get any 12 volt uh, coil. Uh, but anyways, I did get a 12 volt coil so we are going to replace that coil with this one. Should be pretty quick and simple. Basically just take the two wires off the coil on the positive and negative. Um, the positive goes to the switch, negative is the ground. Um, and we will put it back on the new coil and just make sure that you do get the orientation of the positive and negative correct. But other than that, um, really can't screw this up unless you get those two backwards. So. And just like that, with a little bit of camera magic, the new coil is on. So now we're going to take the distributor cap off and put the electronic ignition in. All right, so now we're getting the, the cap off of the distributor. And basically everything you see right there is going to come out. So I'm gonna start off by taking the rotor cap off and it, it looks in pretty decent shape. Looks like somebody's replaced it not too long ago. All this has to come out. So these are your points. Just moves in and out as it goes. He hits a loop here. So this rotates and as this little lip you see that comes out, this arm swings out and that's how the points works. But this assembly here, um, this condenser here, I believe is what it is. The points, all this comes out um, because the, the new electronic ignition will replace all of that. Okay, so I've removed the wire from the outside and let's remove the condenser. So we'll undo this flathead screw here. We'll undo it here and take it out. All right, so here's your points and condenser taken out. No longer need these anymore. All right, with the distributor completely cleaned out. Okay, fed the wires through. It comes with a little grommet. I'll set this there for now. I'll continue pulling the wires through and clean this grommet here. About to the slack that I might need. Okay, so I fed the wires through, the grommets in place. We'll set the electronic ignition down right on the old pattern here. You can see over here that the bolt lines perfectly up. Okay, so I've tightened this screw over here down. It lines up, the electronic ignition lines up with the original post for the points. And so it's really tight in there. I'll go ahead and pull some of this slack out for the wires. Okay, so it's installed, grommets installed. Um, if you notice, the bottom of these has um, like little grooves in it, so it can only go one way. So I'm going to put the rotor on. See, it falls right in there. It only goes one way. And then I'm going to put the cap back on, just for the sake of getting it out of my way here. Okay, and you're left with this black and red wire that comes out of the distributor now. And you're going to connect it to the coil. Um, the red wire coming out is going to go to the positive side and the black wire is gonna to go to the negative side. And they give you a couple of eyelets here to use to do that. So I'm going to strip those wires as long as they need to be, put these eyelets on, tighten them down, and call it good for the ignition. All right, there you go. Got the positive and negative from the new electronic ignition, wired up to the coil, new 12 volt coil. All right, back to the bus bar. Uh, I have made it to O'Reilly's and I've gotten ring terminals and have hooked them up. So now this gets covered over by this cap. 
There you go. So that looks nice. And you put these little plastic um, nuts on it. And it covers over the connections. So it kind of looks like the voltage regulator in a way. And I just dropped that cap. But I'll get these tightened up and call that good. All right. So the final step is to make sure you did everything correctly. So I have found a 12 volt battery at the auto parts store. Um, I brought the six volt battery that was in it, or really they had an eight volt battery in it, to be honest. Um, but I found a battery that was the same size. I'm going to be putting in over here. Now keep in mind, this is very important. If your truck was original six volt, there's a very good chance um, that this truck was positive ground. Um, and with this 12 volt conversion, you're gonna need to convert it to negative ground. Um, and there's three simple steps. One thing is your, if you have a positive ground truck, the easy thing to look at is find the hookup that used to go um, to the positive on the six volt battery, follow it. And if it hooks up to um, a negative post, like for example, this positive wire hooks up to the back of the transmission as a ground to that tells you that this is a positive ground vehicle, um, which this one is. So I'll have to swap this. So now the cable that used to go on the positive will now go to the negative and the negative cable will now go to the positive side. If the coil um, had the ignition going to the negative, um, like on this one, I have it going to the positive, so it should be fine. But if originally it was going to the negative and you put it back that way, um, you'll need to swap these. Um, something else you'll have to do, um, and this is not as important, but if you want to get, make sure that your, um, your ammeter is working correctly, you'll need to swap um, the wires on it. So in other words, the one that used to be on the inside will now be on the out and vice versa. Um, that one's not as important, but if you want a state of charge or to know that you're charging, then you'll need that. All right, so the battery fits in beautifully. Like I said, this this cable used to go to the positive and now it will go to the negative. Um, and the cable that used to go to the negative will now hook up to the positive over here. So this is kind of scary because um, as soon as I give this power, uh, it's gonna give the whole truck power. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the ground first and get that secured. Um, and don't worry, I am going to change out these leads because they look pretty bad. But for now, I'm um, just going to make sure the truck is wired correctly. All right, I've hooked it up. I don't hear anything burning or... I don't smell anything burning. So nothing's burning up from what I can see. Light, light works. That's cool. All right, here's the gauges. So I turn the key, the gas gauge moves. Uh, what about the lights? So let's turn on the lights here. Hey, looky there. They're working. Cool. Well, the tail lights are working too. Cool. All right, let's check the brakes. Cool, that works. All right, I guess the big test of them all, um, is I have the key on, so make sure the truck is in neutral. See if it tries to start. All right, we got start. Cool. All right, in the last final fun test, they say when you convert these six volt horns to 12 volts, they're like trains. So let's see if that's true. Holy crap. That's freaking loud. What's the matter? Y'all didn't like the train horn? Huh? Well, man, that's freaking cool. That was a lot of work. Um, you just really have to understand what's going on understand that it's a positive ground six volt system that you're converting not only to 12 volts but negative ground which is you know actually pretty simple um, just understand read forums uh, and understand this video i did it live everything appears to be working now i will give you two notes one note i have not put the reducer yet for the heater blower motor 
but the process is going to be identical to putting the reducer to the gauge you'll just have a little bit different reducer and it did come with that kit from vintage and the other thing is the turn signals um, and hazard lights that's still the six volt so I'm sure hooking it up just now burnt it out uh, but you can find that at any auto parts store or they can order it for you it's just a generic kit it's nothing fancy um, so I'll need to replace the one that we have in the truck uh, eventually but for now man I am stoked um, it went really well it took me a couple days off and on not because it really took a couple days but because I'm trying not to burn the wife out on the new project so uh, making sure I get stuff done ahead of the truck um, and doing the truck as I allow myself to. So, man, awesome. So now that we have it converted and the engine turns over, the only thing left to do is to uh, try to get it started. So make sure you subscribe to the channel uh, on this next video. I am going to see if this truck will start. Um, it has not started in a very long time and that's going to be very exciting. So stay tuned. Please like the video if you liked it. Um, and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one guys. Bye